In today's episode, turns out Google is wrong. There was no way of crossing that busy road. And we don't know where to put them, so this might be a little bit complicated. We begin riding again, but the weather is very bad as it's now winter. We've been staying in a spare room with this lovely family for the past four days and enjoy a nice hot breakfast before heading out again on our journey. A part of us is sad to leave the warmth of the indoors and comfort of a bed, but we also don't want to overstay our welcome. Very naughty cow. So we just survived an inroad. Other way it looks okay. And uh, now there's something big coming, of course. There will always be one coming. Google Maps thought that there was a bridge for us to cross the inroad, and turns out Google is wrong. There was no way of crossing that busy road. Um, so we had to make a decision to either go the long way down and around to merge onto the road and then be on the road with all these crazy speedy cars, or hop off the horses, walk them down this grassy bank, cross the road, and um, pray that we make it. There's a big... Now, Bibi, there's a big one coming. Oh, well. Are you okay down there? Yes. Oh. So we did that. I am coming, but I don't think he was very smart. See, that was nice. Uh -uh. Over, over, over. Quick, 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 quick. Come on, come on. stressful. Um, still alive. Barely. I don't really see the point in riding horses on roads. It's dangerous and it's stupid and there's so many drivers, they're so stupid, they don't... It would save them 10 seconds of their day and they don't give a shit and they just speed by and almost kill you. So they could what? for 10 seconds. I think it's quite sad and ridiculous that a lot of these road drivers have no respect or sense for human life 
or for animals and it's pretty ridiculous and I'm quite sick of it. I know. I try to get us on these roads though. It is. Pretty awesome. Like you? No, no, I like yielded her, but she was superstar. Oh, yeah? Let's try it in the other direction. Square. Yeah, square. Nice and square. Nice and square. Good girl. Good girl. Put it over. No, no. Don't pin. Come on. Well, I didn't see that that much, but the other one was pretty good. Yeah, it felt. So we made it, we're only a couple of kilometers away from Monastery Aden, and we're sleeping in a stall tonight. <laughs> and luckily for dinner, we have some packed lunches. <laughs> it's okay, Dee. With no artificial colors or flavors. Mm. Hi, Nogi. <laughs> Nogi. I'm in my tent and the super nice, friendly uh, people that we were staying with um, this morning, well, we were staying with them for the past four days and she packed us like a lunch. And so I'm in my tent. We haven't eaten since we've left her place. She stuffed us with this big, wonderful breakfast, hot tea. We went out in the rain all day and then we're in the tent now and I have this amazing like burrito wrap thing <laughs> and this is the only dinner we have so she was definitely a life a lifesaver because we didn't stop any shops or something um, and obviously we're I think food is an issue because we don't have a little stove and if there isn't a shop then there's no food for us so we usually try and carry a sandwich or something um, for the next day or whatever but that requires finding a shop in order to do so. So it's so great to have my little wrap burrito. Uh, thanks to, thanks to Marion. She, yeah, she was great. We were very happy. <laughs> it's the little joys in life that matter. <laughs> oh, and in our packed lunch, she packed little burritos, some little cupcakes, some little Halloween cookies, some candies, 
I haven't even looked at everything. Some scones with butter and jam. <laughs> so we are very spoiled tonight. So it's only five in the afternoon or five in the evening. Horses are tucked in for the night. We're just gonna eat, watch a movie on the computer and sleep. We gotta get up early tomorrow. So it's 9 a.m. and we are on our horses. <laughs> that's the first time, I think. It's the first time. But that's because the uh, person that we stayed with last night said we have to be out by nine. <laughs> but anyways, we did it. <laughs> so now we're he heading for Monasteraden and then somewhere else, other places, up roughly 30k away. Horses are very... eager to go somewhere today. We're crossing into County Sligo. Um, how many counties have we got? We have Cork, Kerry, Limerick, Clare, um, Roscommon, it's this one, now it's Ligo, Galway, morning, good. There we go. This is this happens when you actually get on the horse in the morning. <laughs> and we will enjoy that until about 11 when it starts raining. Yes, until 2. So we better have the ponchos ready. But for now, a lovely crisp morning. My toes are completely frozen. I think I just need to wear some pants when I'm sleeping. <laughs> yeah, helps when we have dry ponchos as well. Look at how peppy she is. <laughs> Lily. She's always so peppy. She's never not peppy. This is how she starts her day and this is how she finishes her day. <laughs> There we have it, a nice view over the lake and there's a bit of sun you can see through the clouds but um, yeah, it officially started, mm, I don't know well, we're in the clouds, I think that's what they would say we're in the clouds now which means we're getting wet again Yeehaw! Mrs. Kelly, how are you today? Better? <laughs> I don't know. It's off and on sunny today, which is nice. And today, actually, we didn't really ride on any busy roads. We like passed some busy roads. So, yeah, today is some of the nicer roads that we've had in quite a long time, I feel. Which is good, considering yesterday I wanted to. about the views today. That was flat for a really long time and now all of a sudden there's hills and a view. That's quite nice. Ireland is pretty when it's not foggy. <laughs> and last one, where did you sleep last night? Uh, yesterday we got quite lucky because the first person we asked for a view to stay well, two stalls for horses, and then he sort of realized that we needed to camp as well. Um, so yeah, they got to stay in a thoroughbred barn. It still makes me wonder if we've like accidentally brought Q back to where she was <laughs> born or something. I guess she would tell us if that was the case. But she was from here somewhere.
it's four in the evening and we found some food finally, thank gosh, because we were really hungry. I mean, we were starving. If we don't find shops, it's a problem. Um, but luckily we found a little fuel station and we're grabbing some food. Um, it's gonna be dark in an hour and so as soon as we're done eating, we basically need to just start knocking on doors and hopefully we find something soon. Not too far from here because we don't want to keep going more today. So yeah, wish us luck. It is a bit nerve wracking when you don't know where you're going to stay and you don't know if people are going to turn you away or if someone's going to be nice and let you in for the night. It is a little bit nerve wracking, especially because we have horses involved. If it was just us, we could probably <laughs> be fine. But because of the horses, yeah, we gotta, we gotta find something. We got very lucky and managed to find a field for our horses for the night thanks to a friendly cow farmer and his family. The ladies have an amazing view for the night while we cozy up to a warm fire in an old house which is being renovated. We sleep on a small fold-out couch for the night, grateful for the fire since the weather is far too cold outside to sleep comfortably in our tent. It is one o'clock in the afternoon. Christian and I finally managed to get on the horses. And today we are heading for Drama Hair. But we have a dilemma because Christian and I have to go to Germany um, for a week for some family commitments. And we need to find somewhere to put the horses for a week. And we don't know where to put them. And we kind of have a flight to catch. So this might be a little bit complicated and it could be a problem. Once again, the friendly Irish people have come through for us. Not only did we manage to find a place for our horses while we were in Germany, but we also managed to find them a field with a view for them to spend the winter enjoying their time off. They deserve a little vacation after our long ride. We know our horses are more than willing to continue to the end of the earth for us, but winter has arrived and it's simply not possible for us to continue. Here we are on the gallops and the beach in County Sligo and um, Ross's Point. Yeah. So this is our finishing point for our ride. Our original goal had been to get to Mullenhead, but it's middle of November. So now that it's getting super cold, the days are very short and no one is at home when it gets dark, our chances to find places and stuff are a bit slim. So we decided to finish our trip here. Finish our trip here. Uh, the horses found a nice place to stay for the a winter month or two for the winter. And um, today um, we will head off. Or we will head off tomorrow to find a new place for us and the horses to live. Yeah. Somewhere um, warm, so probably. Today was our little uh, finishing ride here in Ross's Point on the gallops where they train young racehorses. So we joined in and had a good gallop on the beach. And we're just cooling the horses down now. Packed them up in nice warm blankies. And then they go on a little holiday after I don't know how many kilometers, 400. Have a little holiday. Yeah. So this is a beautiful place to finish our adventure in Ireland. We actually got off of the road finally this whole time. We've been a month and a half only on roads and finally we found in Sligo, Ross's Point, a gallop track on the beach. A gallop track on the beach and um, that was just the perfect way to finish. So yeah. 
The horses are happy and they're gonna have a holiday now. This is what we needed in Ireland. A road track to ride with nice views like this. It's been a long and incredible journey, and although we didn't ride all the way to the north of Ireland, we traveled more than 400 miles in two months with our horses without any vehicle support, completely relying on strangers along the way. Proving that it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. about our Ireland adventures and more in the Equestrian Adventuresses book series available on Amazon Worldwide. These are true stories of horseback adventures around the globe written by fellow adventuresses like you.